what is going on ladies and more importantly gentlemen it is time to break down and give our predictions for this upcoming weekend's fight card headlined by former UFC middleweight champion Robert Whittaker and Kelvin Gastelum but before we get into these breakdowns and predictions make sure you hit the thumbs up button the subscribe button and the notification bell don't be a baby bag bagel biting beta male because you know what time it is it's full time MMA that is right, it is time to give our breakdown and predictions for this weekend's fight card, and we're going to jump right into the main event. Former UFC middleweight champion Robert Whitaker taking on Kelvin Gastelum. Robert Whitaker is 2-0 since getting finished by current, in, current UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya. He's got a decision win over Darren Till and Jared Cannonier since that loss. Kelvin Gastelum, on the other hand, is 1-2 since losing a unanimous decision to Israel Adesanya. He's lost a split decision to Darren Till, and he's got submitted in the first round by Jack Hermanson. Most recently, Kelvin Gastelum is coming off of a unanimous decision win over Ian Heinish, though. As far as my prediction for this fight, I've got to give the edge to Robert Whitaker because not only is he the former champion who's had a full camp, but also he's got more experience against higher level competition than Kelvin Gastelum. If Kelvin Gastelum could win this on short notice, it would be huge. It would be an upset and it would also set up a potential rematch and title shot against current champion Israel Adesanya because their first fight was one of the greatest fights of that year. A lot of people would argue maybe up there with one of the greatest fights of all time. They definitely had a bang out performance. So a lot of people definitely would not mind seeing that rematch. This is a huge fight for both Kelvin Gastelum and Robert Whitaker in terms of positioning for the next title shot in the UFC's middleweight division. So best luck to both the gentlemen. I'm giving the edge to Robert Whitaker. Next up in the UFC's featherweight division, we've got the little heathen Jeremy Stevens taking on Drakkar Close. Drakkar Close is 5-2 in the UFC. He's coming off of a knockout loss to Benil Dariush. This was a little over a year ago, and it snapped a three-fight winning streak over decent competition for Drakkar Close. The little heathen, on the other hand, Jeremy Stevens, has a lot more experience in the UFC and outside of the UFC, but he is 0 wins four losses in one draw in his last five fights his last win came a little over three years ago over josh emmett that being said jeremy stevens has fought against a lot of the best fighters in the world in his current losing streak aside from his fights with yair who i don't think fits that criteria quite yet so this is a tough fight to call but I've got to get that give the edge to the little heathen Jeremy Stevens based off his experience alone and the caliber of competition he's been facing. I'm giving the edge to Jeremy Stevens. Moving on, we've got a heavyweight showdown between the pit bull Andre Arlovsky and the meme king Chase Sherman, a.k.a. the bared knuckle brawler. Chase Sherman's second fight. This is his second fight back in the UFC since being cut. When he got cut from the UFC, he went 3-0 and in another MMA promotion, Island Fights. He also fought for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, where he went 1-0-1. One, um, Chase Sherman, I think he actually he went 1-1-1. One, one, one. He had three fights, he went 1-1-1. One, one, one. So he fought six times total since being cut in the UFC, and he won three MMA fights. He, he won a Bare Knuckle fight, he had a Bare Knuckle draw, and he lost one Bare Knuckle fight. Andre Arlovsky is actually stepping into this fight on short notice. He's 42 years old, fighting his second fight in less than two months. He's coming off of a second round loss to Tom Aspinall. But Tom, Andre Arlovsky is fighting like he's 24 years old, not 42. This is a super tough fight to call with Andre Arlovsky being as active as he's been. Typically, you don't see that from fighters his age. He's fought three fights in five months, which makes me think he might be doing just a little bit too much. But to be fair, he has fought and beat a lot higher level competition than Chase Sherman in his career. And even recently, when he fought and beat Tanner Bozer via unanimous decision. So with that being said, I'm giving the edge to Andre Arlovsky, but it's a toss-up for me. This is a toss-up for me, and it's a heavyweight fight, so I'm going to be tuned in. That's all I know. Great fight. I'm giving the edge to the veteran and the pit bull, Andre Arlovsky. Moving on, we've got Abdul Razak Al-Hassan taking on Jacob Malkoon. 
Malakun has never beat anybody close to UFC caliber, and Al Hassan has wins over Sabah Hamasi and Nico Price. That being said, Al Hassan is 10 years older than Malakun, and he recently lost a unanimous decision to Munir Lazez, who had previously also not beaten anybody UFC caliber prior to beating Al Hassan, which tends to make me think Malakun has even more of a chance in this fight. Even with that being said, I've got to take Abdul Razak Al Hassan to win this fight. I'm not as confident as I should be given his impressive wins in the past, but I will give the edge to Abdul Razak Al Hassan to win. We've got two more fights to break down. We've got the violent Bob Ross Luis Pena taking on Alexander Munoz. This is also a tough fight to call because Alexander Munoz fights out of Team Alpha Male and has great wrestling. So he has a great chance of just wrestle humping Luis Pena for three rounds. But Pena has been training with American Kickboxing Academy, so hopefully he'll be able to staff off a couple of those takedowns. Hopefully he's been getting some rounds in with Khabib and Cormier and Velasquez and just all of the and all of those killers that AKA has to sharpen up guys wrestling. So hopefully Luis Pena has been able to fast track his wrestling defense and that'll help him in this fight tremendously. He's also got some power and good submission attempts, so he's got more paths to victory than Alexander Munoz, I believe. So I'm actually giving the edge to Luis Pena, but if he gets wrestle humped in this fight to a decision, I also would not be surprised because Team Alpha Male's t fighters usually have pretty good wrestling to rely on. I'm going with Luis Pena, though. Next, Ricardo Ramos versus Bill Algeo. This is a fight that Ricardo Ramos, I think, should be a 3-1 to one favorite in. He should be a pretty big favorite, but he's not. It's dead even. The odds makers have this fight dead even. I don't understand it because Ricardo Ramos is 5-2 and two in the UFC coming off of a first-round TKO loss to undefeated Leroy Murphy. Bill Algeo was fighting straight jobbers, cans, before entering the UFC when he lost his debut to Ricardo Ramos but he managed to win a unanimous decision against Spike Carlisle, so he's 1-1 one one in the UFC. I'm taking Ricardo Ramos to win this fight. He's fought against higher-level competition throughout his career. He's much more experienced and also the younger fighter. But like I said, the odds makers see something in Algeo that have me pumping the brakes. I'm picking Ricardo Ramos, but the odds makers have me kind of worried. That Those are my picks. Those That's the breakdown. Those are my predictions. We got Robert Whitaker in the main event. Jeremy Stevens in the co-main event. Andre Arlovsky coming up next. Then we've got Abdul Razak Al-Hassan winning his fight. Luis Pena and Ricardo Ramos. Those are our six predictions for the main card. With that being said, let me know your predictions in the comments. Also, if you click the link and join the Discord, you can get the fight template and you can make your own predictions um, with a fight template that you, you see on the screen so with that being said man it is what it is we're out